Move fast and break things. That's been the mantra from Silicon Valley. It's also essentially what happened in Iowa this week when the Democrats used an app to help run their caucus election and it failed miserably. We're talking about how basically it was all counted at this time four years ago. We've been told now for about two hours that numbers are about to roll in. Uh, this is something is seriously off. It's a complete gong show. Uh, no one knows what's going on. No matter what the results are now, they're going to be questioned in terms of their authenticity. It was unbelievable. I've covered all kinds of races over the years. I've never seen anything like that. Luckily, there were also paper ballots in Iowa, and there's no indication that the actual results were tampered with. Although some Republicans sure love that headline, including President Trump's son, Eric, who tweeted, Mark my words, they are rigging this thing. So here's the thing. There's a bigger question here. When technology fails... Does it make people believe that their vote doesn't matter? Increasingly, parties and election officials are jumping on all kinds of shiny new tech, not just apps, but voting machines, even online voting. And it's not just Iowa, it's here. One of the big players is a Canadian company. It's called Dominion Voting Systems. Their technology is being used across the country in provincial elections and in leadership contests for the Liberals and the Conservatives. So federally, well, we did some digging and found that the company has been lobbying to change the law to allow electronic voting here too. But we've already seen glitches with this new tech. After Ontario brought in electronic voting lists and vote counters, there were problems. There were long lineups and complaints like, like this one. Someone named Avery tweeted, no one can get the ballot machine to work. I'm going to have to leave and my vote will not be counted. Why is my vote being suppressed through incompetence? And it's not just Ontario. Glitches have happened across the country. Back to the States, check out this video posted on social media. A voter frustrated with a touchscreen machine in Mississippi. It is not letting me vote for who I want to vote for. It's unclear to us which company is behind this tech. Election officials have said it was a glitch and there is no evidence the results were affected. But in the comments below that video online, hundreds of people were still questioning the outcome, worried that the machines might have been hacked. And at a big tech conference this past year, white hat hackers appeared to show how easy it could be to hack one. All you have to do is pick this lock here with a ballpoint pen. That video, it lasts less than two minutes, and by the end of it, she says, she has full access to the voting machine. Joining me now from New York is Lulu Freistadt. She is the co-founder of Smart Elections. It's a nonprofit that focuses on election security. So, Lulu, you've been to some of these DEF CON hacking conferences. You've witnessed how easy it is to hack into some of these voting machines. What, what exactly have you seen? It's surprisingly easy. I've filmed three different DEF CONs and I've also done independent investigations. And most of these machines, whether they're optical scan systems or they're touch screen systems, are incredibly vulnerable to hackers and also to errors. So at the last DEF CON I was at, a team of students, I timed them connecting just a simple cable to a port on the machine. It took six seconds. Huh. And that port was very close to where a voter would vote. And so it's remarkably easy to access ports and various, uh, other, um, various other places where you can input information into a machine where you could put malware into it. Now, if the voting machine that you're voting on is working efficiently, it will count your vote. But if it's running malware, then it might count the vote that you cast for a different candidate than the one that you chose. And so we know that that is a risk for all types of voting machines, whether they're touchscreen voting machines, optical scanners, they're all computers and they all can be programmed with malware. So kind of begs the question, if this technology is so vulnerable, why is everybody using it? One of the main reasons that we're using this technology is because vendors are pushing it. It's expensive and vendors make a lot more money pushing expensive equipment than they do selling you a scanner that reads a paper ballot. There's very cozy relationships between the vendors and the election officials and sometimes government officials as well. So you have, you have a revolving door in the same way that you have a revolving door in government where lobbyists go in and out of government. You have vendors going in and out of uh, 
vendors who are working with election officials and then go back and work for vendors or vendors who are working for a government office or the Secretary of State. And you also literally have really what you would have to say gifts being given or donations being made by the vendors. Even here in the United States, people have gotten organized, people have protested against these vendors and the companies, and often it hasn't done any good. But you can try to alert people to the problems, and maybe you'll have better luck there in Canada. Well, we've learned, actually, that one of the biggest players in this industry is a Canadian company called Dominion Voting Systems. They've been lobbying the federal government to change election law here to allow electronic voting in elections. So what's your message to Canada? My message is buyer beware. New and shiny is not necessarily better. Security experts recommend hand-marked paper ballots. And if you need a scanner to count them, that's an efficient way to count them. But then it's very important to do a hand count audit and make sure that the scanner has counted correctly. And there's, there's a few types of hand count audits that security experts recommend, either a 100% hand count audit or a risk limiting audit. But the less technology, the better. And that is what security, recom that's what security experts recommend, less technology. And they would know because they work with technology. So Canadians should watch out for this. You saw that in Iowa. That's just such a clear demonstration of it. Here there's this new shiny app that the Democrats got that's supposed, supposed to make it easier for them to report their totals to their headquarters. It had a quote unquote coding error. It made it almost impossible for them to report their totals to headquarters. And at the end of the day, most of them had to just call on the phone anyway. And instead of doing it quickly and efficiently, they spent hours and hours on the phone trying to get through. The whole thing was a mess because they wanted some new shiny app. But really, it didn't help them. And all it did was completely undermine voter confidence. Lulu Freistadt, thank you so much for talking to me. Absolutely, my pleasure. Lulu Freistadt in New York. Well, Dominion Voting Systems, whose equipment was allegedly hacked as part of that DEF CON experiment that we just mentioned, sent us this statement. They say, Dominion works with third-party testers and independent researchers to conduct penetration tests and other types of quality checks against our systems to ensure their security. No hacking or malicious compromise of voting systems took place in 2016 or at any other time. We will post their entire statement on our website. Joining me now, also from New York, is Jessica Hoosman. She is the elections reporter for ProPublica. It is a nonprofit that does investigative journalism. So, Jessica, you did some research on that app that was used for the Iowa caucus, uh, and you found that it could have been even worse, right? So we found that the app was vulnerable to having information and uh, information change. The votes could have actually been changed within the app. And so perhaps it's a blessing in disguise that it didn't end up working. Um, but yes, it certainly could have been worse. You've seen the reaction on social media and in all the newspapers with so much coverage about how people are saying, oh, this means it's rigged. This means my vote doesn't matter. I just like how much does this contribute to this idea of you, you can't trust elections, you can't trust technology? I think that unfortunately it contributes co contributes quite a lot, and so the uh, the people who are who benefit from misinformation are really playing off of this. You've already seen people within Donald Trump's campaign, for example, Brad Parscale, who runs his digital operations, saying that it's rigged and lacking and and making it so that they can use this as a way to instill distrust in the Democratic Party going forward. And I think that any time that something like this of this magnitude happens around democracy, especially when we're already concerned about hacking, we're already concerned about cybersecurity, um, the Russia narrative still haunts elections to this day. Anything, anytime something happens like this, people use that to sort of all to justify their beliefs that the system is against them or that it won't work, even if that's really not the case. So this could not be a bigger disaster. But I wonder why are politicians so in love with this technology? Is it like not the first time we've seen a glitch? You've talked about the sort of the power of, I know, of these and companies. I 
speed. I think that everybody wants a faster result and everybody wants a process that is inherently very complicated to be easier. And so the idea that technology can improve things is is sort of something that we understand to be true across the board. If we just, you know, if, if the New York City subway system were better computerized, then maybe it would run faster. But that does not translate to elections. And I think the elections are just much more complicated than people give them credit for. It's not a thing that technology can fix necessarily. And it's also maybe not a thing that we want to entrust technology to. There are certain things where convenience should trump, um, you know, accuracy. So what happens now? Like, how do you maintain trust in the electoral system when people are, they look at what happened in Iowa and it's like, I don't trust anybody. I don't trust the system. How do you maintain confidence? I was really troubled, and I think a lot of people were troubled by the messages that were being put out by high up elected officials in the United States. For example, Marco Rubio, in the midst of this crisis, tweeted out, if this is happening in Iowa, can you imagine it happening on, on a national scale, even though there's no evidence whatsoever that this problem will reoccur? And that type of fear mongering is really problematic. And I think that it's on our public officials to really be transparent about this problem and reinforce confidence in the system. Jessica Hoosman, thank you so much for talking to me. Thank you so much. Jessica Hoosman in New York. The next primary is Tuesday in New Hampshire, and voters there will be using paper ballots because, according to one state official, you can't hack a pencil. 